hey there, American Farmstead Hers. This is Jenny with the Gramstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel. And we are coming to y'all from Northeast Florida as two American Farmstead Hers, doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you'll grow a little food of your own. Yep. And this week we are reporting back to you as promised after Scrub Fest 3. Yes. And really, I think this Scrub Fest was the best one yet. I agree. It was so fun. Yeah, I mean, they had just a really nice variety of speakers. Yeah. Um, usually it's a lot of, you know, food foresty type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time they mixed it up a little bit and they had a Florida bullfrog out there as a speaker who has a new book out called Survival Chickens, mm-hmm. um, which I can really relate to the whole survival chicken idea because. That's kind of how I treat, treat my chickens. <laughs> yeah, and that guy, man, he stayed busy talking to people all day he long. He did. He yeah. had, and it's normally David that has people standing yeah. there waiting for him all day long. But this time it was the Florida Bulldog guy. So Bullfrog. Bullfrog, yeah. Bullfrog, yeah. not Bulldog. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I liked the premise that he had and you know, like we baby our chickens um, we've domesticated lines to the point of like if they're not cooped, then they don't thrive. Um, they can't survive. Right. If they're not fed grains heavily, right. then they they can't survive. And he's right. Right. Yeah. He's right. So um, yeah, it was cool to listen to him. It was a, it was a nice twist on the it whole was. day. So. It was. It was. And we came home with some plants, of course. Uh-huh. I got a loquat tree, which I'm super excited about. I already got that in the ground. It went in my garden. Yeah. And um, I got two elderberries. You know that loquat can get big. I know. But now I have the prune a little fruit tree <laughs> yeah. book, which I've actually read more than half of it already. For real. And it's a good book. I actually already pruned um, my nectarine tree and uh-huh. my mulberry tree that's in the garden um, using those principles from that book, it, trying to get it to grow in the direction that you want it to grow in. Right. And it works. Good. Like the cuts that I made, they're actually doing what the, I, I wanted them to do. Nice. So. Already. 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 Sweet. Yeah. So um, I need to take care of some new trees also. So I need to revisit the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Summertime. You're to keep a fruit tree small, you prune in the summer when the growth is vigorous. So it's too late for now. It's a little too late mm-hmm. right now. Okay. But there's also, I'm just now getting into the part of the book where it talks about fall and winter pruning and what place that has. Oh, so I'll just start there. Right. You can just start there. Okay. Yeah. I have some trees that I'll do this fall and winter too. So okay, we haven't gotten there yet. Cool. So yeah, maybe like we can read the book and maybe we'll do a podcast episode on that. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, then maybe we'll know what we're talking about. <laughs> we really do just like wing it a lot of times, you a know, lot of the times on we the do. farm. Like we're, we're learning right alongside our listeners. And right. that's why we do what we do here on the podcast is to let you guys know that some of this is trial and error and we're right. learning along the way, just right. like you. And sometimes it's okay to just go for it. Yeah. You know, you'll learn something mm-hmm. even if you fail. Right. So, right. Um, so yeah, Mark Bailey, he's always out at Scrub Fest and that's, that's one smart dude. Like he's, he's interesting to like, he can just talk and talk and he knows, Mm -hmm. he, he knows his stuff about his plants. So, um, he usually talks about, you know, food forest type stuff out there. But when we were talking with him off to the side, he mentioned, um, that he used to be really big into row cropping. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it would be fun to talk to him about row cropping one day too. Well, that's kind of his job. So he's an extension agent right. um, for IFAS in Marion County. And so he, that that's, that's his background. That's his job is mm-hmm. to work with the local farmers who are going to be row croppers. Right. And, um, but remember last year, he spoke last year as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he said that I don't know why I remember this, it stuck with me though, that he really was was working to gear more of his his agency, I guess, towards um, the homestead movement because he sees an uptick in he that sees in the his need county. For it. Yes, and he gets the questions. Yeah, because we always tell homesteaders, talk to your extension agent. Right. You know, that's what they're there for. That's what your tax dollars are paying for. Right. And so he's seeing the uptick in it. And so he really wants to to kind of go in that route a little bit more. And so his talk that he gave, we thought would be super beneficial to everybody yeah. to kind of go through. Um, so it's at a 
double landscaping, right? Yes, it was. I think they called it foodscaping your yard. Foodscaping. Foodscaping your yard. And so, of course, everything that he talks about is is geared toward Florida-friendly stuff, obviously, because we're in Florida. But I think that, you know, it can apply to many zones. I mean, I think a lot of the things on his list, um, he even has some Zone 7, even Zone Mm -hmm. 6 is on there. Mm -hmm, So, mm -hmm. uh, really, he's got stuff from 6 to 11 on there. Right. Um, but yeah, foodscaping your yard. And so the number one principle of Florida friendly landscaping is the right plant in the right place. Mm-hmm. And David kind of talked about this at the end of the day, like <clears throat> give it some good thought, give <laughs> it a go, put the plant in the ground. And if worse comes to worse and it's not happy, just move it. Right. You know, like it's not the end of the world. Like right. It doesn't have to stay there forever. I think he said something like, the plant police are not going to come get you. <laughs> it's okay to dig it up and put it in a happier spot. <laughs> right, right. And at one point, I think he even said something to the effect of, just plant the plant before you die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, and that is something that like what he talked about was um, planning your food forest in a weekend or, and yes. and he's working on this challenge through his group online. It's a subscriber based challenge where it's, uh, and it has been going on for several weeks now. And here we are at the end of October, but it was to establish a food forest by Halloween. Right. And so the, and it's, it's like four weeks or six weeks from, I mean, a really a short amount of time mm-hmm. as far as trees go, you know? Right. And so it's, and then it, it's been that challenge to stop with the analysis paralysis. Right. And just do it. And just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, plant the plant before the roots grow through the container and it plants itself. Right. <laughs> right. I have a really cool thing happening in my garden where I planted a Barbados cherry tree mm-hmm. that I haven't gotten any cherries off. I have decided it hates me. But I've since, <laughs> like this summer, learned because so I have friends with the same trees and they're picking cherries. I'm like, what? What is the right, secret? What is, what is the deal? What do I? What does it need? It's not happy. And they're like, ignore it. It's like, oh, okay. So I ignored it. I've got two of them actually. I ignored them. Um, but one of them, um, I have been meticulous about taking grass out of the garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just left this one little space alone. And marigolds volunteered there. Okay. And it has a huge patch of beautiful, bushy, vibrant marigolds surrounding this Barbados cherry tree. I was like, huh, how about that? And so it's like naturally mulched, right? Right. I've ignored it. Right. I have blossoms on it for the first time. Right. So, well, then there you go. There you uh, go. <laughs> because Mark and uh, what was the lady's name who spoke with him? Was her name, her name wasn't Karen. No, is it um, Lindsay something? Oh, I hate that. I don't remember that. I didn't write it down. Because she was super knowledgeable too. Yeah, she was. Um, but one thing that they talked about is that, you know, right plant, right place, and plants suited for the right conditions will need less care and less maintenance to be productive. Right. You know, right. so... Maybe now that you've got those conditions right, where you've Mm -hmm. got some, you know, some natural mulch going around that tree Mm -hmm. and you've gotten the grass out of there. Right. Because grass will kill a tree. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking I need to put compost on there and cardboard and, you know, to keep the, the grass smothered out. But instead I pulled the grass out. I watered it well, and then I left it alone. Like my friend said, just ignore it. And yes. and here come the marigolds. And at first, I'm not good about telling. So <laughs> marigold seedlings look a lot like a weed seed, seedling that we have that comes up also. And I, I can't ever remember, is that a marigold that I should leave alone? Or is it something I should pluck out? It's going to be a real nightmare. Right. And I just left it alone, and mm-hmm. it turned out to be marigolds, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, so I have. I, I don't know that I'll get any cherries off of it this year. We probably have a frost or something before. Probably, but anyway. But then there's hope for next year. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So yeah. Yep. Another big takeaway I had um, from it was Amanda. That was her Amanda. Name. Thank you. Her name was Amanda. Mark and Amanda. Yeah. Um, another big takeaway I had from uh, their talk that they did when they talked about establishment. Mm-hmm. You need to get your trees to establishment before you can really start to just let them go and they do their own thing. So their rule of thumb um, was for a, for a solid year mm-hmm. to be watering that tree, mm-hmm. keeping the grass out from around it and water the tree for a year. Once you get to that year mark, 
it'll be established. And then at that point, you can really start to be on your low maintenance schedule. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've been trying to water my fruit trees now. <laughs> <laughs> now. We've had a really weird year with rain. Like we had a summer drought, which is really unusual. Mm -hmm. You know, we usually have a spring drought and we kind of had wetter weather in the spring. And then we had a ton of rain. And then we had, right, we had Helene and Milton. <laughs> and so like it's just, and then nothing since. With nothing since. It's yeah. been weird. It's been really weird. So yeah, remembering to water those baby trees in mm -hmm. is so, so important. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so let's look at their list. Yeah, I wanted to talk about some of the plants that he recommended. Um, you talked about you planted, you bought a loquat. I did. I bought a loquat because you speak so highly of your loquat tree. It, yeah. I, <laughs> well, so it is established. It was established when we got here. I should say that. Um, but I don't do anything to it. Eric pruned the bottom part of it, which really aggravates me <laughs> because <laughs> I can't reach a lot of the fruit now. Um, but it is a very tall tree. It it's reaches, a big tree. Yeah, it's it's as tall as the house is. Mm -hmm. so, but that, it kind of works out for us because I can reach the lower fruits. The birds can have the top fruits. It's a win-win. Everybody's happy, yeah. Yeah, so loquat was on the list. Mm -hmm. um, fig, which... <gasps> Yes. I'm getting a lot of figs on my fig trees Can now. I tell you what I keep doing? What? <laughs> Eating them like a day before they're ready. Oh, I know. <laughs> because I don't want to miss them. I know. Every time I go in there, I'm like, are they ready? Are they I ready? Know. Yeah. No, and I have a lot that are not quite ripe yet. So, uh -huh. um, I keep eating I'm watching them, them like just a smidge underripe. <laughs> I mean, they're, the only problem is they're not as sweet as they will be mm -hmm. when they're fully ripe. But yeah, I've yeah. Got, got a couple of figs too. Uh, blueberries. Blueberries. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have high hopes for my blueberries this coming season um, because mm -hmm. they did pretty well this past spring um, when they were fruiting. So I'm really hoping that I'll get more blueberries this year. I moved all of my blueberry bushes that I had. Did you? Yeah, I had four. And I moved them, and um, I have high hopes that they will like their place better now. Okay. And so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. They actually, their leaves look better because, again, I moved them, and I'm watering them. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they got new that. leaves, I know. <laughs> I mulched mine really, really, really heavy with a bunch of pine shavings. Mm. So I'm hoping that they'll like that acidity. It's a good idea. So I've got some, we always talk about baby meat bird, right. um, brooder right. bedding. I've got that. Yeah. I think I'll use that. Yep. It's a good idea. I have a bunch of pine because the electric company just installed <laughs> power to my new neighbors. And so um, I scored on a couple of huge loads of mulch. So That's I still nice. have a pretty big pile, but I'm still working on it. Cool. Uh, passion fruit. I've never grown passion fruit. You know, I've only grown passion fruit once, and it was when my girls were really little. So this was probably like... In Texas? 16, 17 years ago. Okay. It was actually before we moved to Texas. Oh, wow. It was when we lived up on the west side of Jacksonville. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in our backyard... Uh, we built a bamboo teepee mm -hmm. for them to play in, like a little playhouse. And I planted passion fruit Aww. all around the edge of the teepee. And that passion fruit covered the whole... It was beautiful. I bet. It was so cool. They're and they, such pretty flowers. They're beautiful. And so my girls loved playing in that little passion fruit teepee. And you haven't grown it since? No. <laughs> Did you get fruit off of it? No. No. Lots of flowers. Lots of flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Passion fruit is one of those things that it's kind of subtropical, right? Mm -hmm. I, I believe. Let's, let's check yeah, here. Yeah, it's a nine, 9B to 13. Yeah. Bang. To like full-on tropical. Right. That's like full-on <laughs> tropical. Yeah. So I have a new rule on my farm that if I have to like really baby it through our cold, hard I'm freezes, I'm not buying it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Mm-mm. So it'll live or it won't. And, and I don't know that passion fruit would live yeah, if I, I didn't baby it. I don't know. So. I have no idea. Uh, persimmons. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which, speaking of persimmons, we have the Persimmon Festival coming up. We do. This, it's this Sunday. It is. It's this Sunday. The third. Yes, yep, November at, 3rd. Um, yeah, Eat Your Yard Jacks. We had Tim on before. Mm-hmm. Um, a few episodes ago, we had Tim on. Uh, but, yeah, the Persimmon Festival. So, um that should be fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He's got a good lineup. Yeah, we're going to come talk chickens. Come say hey yeah. if you guys are around um, and try some persimmon beer. Yes. <laughs> I think that's super cool. I can't wait to try the persimmon beer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if y'all want tickets, go to Eat Your Yard Jacks. I think it's dot .org. .org. Mm-hmm. Yep, eatyouryardjacks.org. And they have a link on there where you can buy tickets. And I think kids are free. So ten, that's ten cool. and under with an adult ticket okay. is free. Yep. Good deal. Yep. Uh, pineapple guava. <laughs> oh my gosh, pineapple guava. Okay. okay. So how long have we had our pineapple guavas? I just I think I just got mine last year from you. Right. As a cutting. Okay. So I didn't expect anything. So I've had mine for two years. Okay. This will be going next yeah. I've mm-hmm. had mine for two years. How big is yours? Uh, same size as when I bought it. Um, it's probably about three feet tall. And it's, it's, I think my cutting that I got from you is three feet tall. It's like a nice bush, you know, like Uh a bushy shrub. Uh huh. And, um, I mean, it looks great. It looks healthy. It's not really getting any big. It never blooms. Um, yeah, I haven't gotten any blooms either. But I did lose the strawberry guava. I did too. And so I only have one pineapple guava. I need to take more cuttings because I do know that you do need a pollinator. So, Mm -hmm. but you would think it would still bloom. I would think it would at least bloom. It just right. wouldn't it wouldn't pollinate. Fruit. It wouldn't fruit. Right. right. Um, maybe if you guys know something about that, my question is if you take cuttings from the one plant to to make new plants and so that's a clone right. off of the parent plant, is that sufficient enough? to be a different plant to cross-pollinate. Am I being too nerdy about thinking about that? No, I have heard. Well, and I think that's why we had originally bought the strawberry guava because at Scrub Fest, Uh you know, at Scrubland Farms Nursery, they Mm -hmm. told us Mm -hmm. you'll get, it'll do better if you choose a different type of guava. So we got that strawberry one Mm -hmm. and man, that thing got wiped out in the freeze. That was no joke. Yeah, and I protected that. I babied it. And I babied it. I still mine lost too. it. Yeah. Yeah. But the pineapple guava, it I think it's hardy. I didn't do anything to it last year. Mm-mm, and me no, it looks great. It's just not doing anything for me yet. Right. So right. Um rosemary is another thing that uh Mark and Amanda had on their list. Oh yeah. Yeah. It makes a great pretty little evergreen. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Nice shrub. Mm-hmm. Edible, medicinal, mm-hmm. um, muscadine. Oh, so I have muscadine that hasn't done anything. And then I bought some other kind of, it says non-muscadine. Right. It was grape. called Southern Home. Something like that. Yeah. Southern Homestead grape or home. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Something like that. I got it at Scrub Fest. So if y'all are interested, go see Sam, make an appointment, get to his nursery and he will sell you these grapes. Um, But the, so I was like, okay, I want to do this right. And tried to research them. And what I could find is that they are basically a muscadine, but, but they have smaller, less seeds. Right. A a smaller seed pod. Right. So um, I don't know. I, I, I have really big hopes because Eric built me a whole grape trellis right in the middle mm-hmm. of my garden for him. <laughs> so I hope they do well. Right. So Hopefully. grapes is not something I've ever been successful with except by accident. So mm. it wasn't my doing. I have grapes on my muscadine right now. Do you? Mm-hmm. A couple little clusters. Mm. I feel like it's taking them a really long time to ripen though. So I'm not yeah. sure. Because like where are my guys hunt in South Carolina, mm-hmm. they, it's past muscadine season. Yeah. I, and I don't know why they never ripened, but they're mm. still on the plant. I are check they, them all the time. Are you sure they're a purple variety or are they the green variety? Yes. I have already picked some. They are purple. Okay. Well, so I don't know. know. <laughs> Again, our weather's been weird this year. Mm-hmm. So maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. So the plant looks great, but yeah. yeah. Uh, mulberries on the list. We already talked about mulberry a Woo-hoo! little bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've, we have talked about mulberries and then Yopon Hollies, um, your natural caffeine. 
Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. The leaves. So you can use the leaves for tea. Yeah, I guess. Um, I So I'm not super familiar. I know that they do produce a berry, but I don't think you use the berries. Okay. I think you just use the leaves to, to make a tea with. Yes, yes. It says that the leaves are edible. That might be a fun addition then. I mean... Tea, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's your it's your only natural North American native caffeinated plant, so you will find it. Like I've seen it in the um, in the local state park. Okay, <laughs> I thought I should just take a clipping, right? <laughs> but I don't. I don't think that's frowned upon. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to have that um, added to my garden. Nice. I did have a green tea tree. And I got rid of it. Yes, I had a green tea. Also, it wasn't growing much and it wasn't serving me. No. Like I wasn't picking from it. Right. Yeah. I pulled mine, the whole thing out and fed it to the cows. Yeah. I pulled mine out as well. Um, but now hindsight, I'm kind of thinking that I should have just mowed it down, which I did with my goji berries and they look beautiful <laughs> now. I, I saw. Are you the, getting berries? No. Oh, okay. No, but they're growing like the plant itself yeah. is growing back. And so it's probably only like a foot and a half tall right uh-huh. now. Like I just noticed it the other day. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> those are the goji berries that I mowed down. Oh, that's funny. Um, and the plant looks beautiful right now. And I mean, it's, it, it's nice and full with foliage. It's nice and green. So mm. I'm like, okay, goji berries. Okay. We'll give it another try. Maybe they need a winter prune. Right. A good mowing. A good mowing. (laughs) I mowed mine also, and then I covered them over with plastic. (laughs) So I don't think they're coming back. (laughs) They're going to stay under plastic for the whole winter. So that's funny. I think those are done. That's funny. Um, So, yeah, so Scrubland Farms Nursery in Fort McCoy. If um, you guys are interested, make an appointment. They don't have open nursery hours anymore, but they are there and they're happy to meet you, but you just have to make an appointment. Which, I mean, I think that's a fabulous way to do it because Mm -hmm. then you get one-on-one, somebody to walk you around the nursery and show you what everything is, answer all your questions. They have beautiful plants, a beautiful setup. They really do. They're doing a really cool thing there. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if you're local to like central, north central Florida area, Mm -hmm. Ocala, Mm -hmm. check out Sam. All right, so what do you have going on on your farm? Um, it's kind of a season of rest for us. Um, besides, I, I planted my new grapevines, and okay. we, we built that trellis. That's cool in the garden. I kind of have a new garden thing happening. Um, I have fall cucumbers that are finishing. I've made a bunch of pickles. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'll be pulling that stuff out and adding in some brassicas. And carrot seeds and, you know, stuff like that. So I have a little bit of both season, warm and cool, happening at the same time uh-huh. in that overlap period. Uh-huh. Um, and my in-ground garden, I've really taken a step back to, you know, like I like to grow a year's worth of onions. Not doing that this year. Yeah. I need to catch up. I had such a hard time after our busy spring, you know, Mm -hmm. we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. And then summer too, I had a sick cow all summer. That was not just a sick cow. It was like, she was on death's door all summer. It was so hard on us. And um, it just was busy. Yeah. Milking four cows all summer also. So garden didn't happen. Right. And so (laughs) I feel like I, I need to take a step back and like, what can I reasonably do? Yeah. On the day-to-day, the week-to-week, the season-to-season basis. And so in doing that, I, I let some things go. So I will be buying a bunch of onions from the produce man, you right. know, and I'm going to be okay with that. Right. I have a basket full of potatoes on my back porch that I harvested at the end of season and spring mm-hmm. that are sprouted. I'm mm-hmm. going to go put those in the ground and whatever happens, happens. Right. Like I'm not going to beat myself up over it anymore. Yeah. I'm also not going to buy potatoes I don't think. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so I have this like new thing going on. And so I've covered over most of the in-ground portion of my garden and about two thirds of it. And the last third is where my fruit trees are. And so those fruit trees are where I'm going to build out my food forest. Yep. Potatoes can go in the ground there. Yep. And, and maybe I'll get something from them. And if I don't, then, oh, well, it'll be biomatter. Right. <laughs> I don't Organic know. matter for the soil. Yes. It'll be something. <laughs> it'll be something. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And then I'll be able to pull that plastic back a little at a time as I add stuff in, as yep. I'm able to get my hands on bulk mulch, you yeah. know, 
and then really just focused on my raised beds. And so I have 14 raised beds. They're eight by four each. That's a lot of growing space. I mean, it's a ton. You know, when you look at square foot gardening and intensive planting, it's a, that's a ton of space. I've grown enough food for our family in that a couple of times over. So there's no reason that I need more space, more space, more space. Right. So that's kind of where my head is right now. Yeah, I'm using less space in my garden right now, too. Yeah. Um, I've got all my raised beds full. Um, I've got some stuff in the ground, but I'm not utilizing my in-ground space like I normally do either. So I'm kind of going with the raised bed thing right now just for something different. And I'm growing on my porch. My Mm -hmm. green stock is looking good. Right. Um, And then I have a whiskey barrel planter that has a bunch of brassicas in it right now. So And that's on the porch because... I mean, really, right now, I don't need to grow a ton of food. Right. You know, so. Yeah. It's it's kind of a nice place to be in to look at the reality of what you can do versus what you want to do. Right. You know, because I've said a million times, I'm the queen of I'm gonna. Yeah. (laughs) And I do sometimes. And I think, I think the ADD gets me to like where I'm, you know, I, I, I like planning the thing more than I like doing the thing Mm -hmm. sometimes. It's very true. I'm like that too. So I start doing the thing and then I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, well, I, I, rather do this other thing right now. I'm kind of bored with that. And not, not that gardening could ever be boring, but I, I do, I get bored with the thing. So I turn my attention elsewhere and I'm only really good at focusing on one thing at a time. (laughs) I'm (laughs) mediocre at focusing on multiple things at a time. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's okay. It is okay. Yeah. It's okay not to do all the things. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm milking one cow right now. That's amazing. She's a super low producer. Okay. So I'm not selling any milk. Like right. I don't have it to sell to anybody. So hey, if you're local and you're a milk customer, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just for us right now. And I and well, I'm liking that, like not dealing with customers. Right. right. And for everything there is a season. Like mm-hmm. busy season will come back. There'll mm-hmm. be plenty of milk to sell later. Oh yes. And and really in this quiet time. I have a better grasp on what's needed to make things function yeah. well. Yeah. So that I'm not pulling my hair out when something else demands my attention. Mm-hmm. And so it's 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 really it's a good season for me right now. Yeah. So that's awesome. I hope I can hang on to that when I'm milking all the cows again. <laughs> Cuz I've I've made some really stupid plans for somebody who gets overwhelmed. <laughs> But I think it's good. Like, it's good. <laughs> it is good. What are you thinking? I know. I don't know what I'm thinking. But, you know, Eric, you, people ask me all the time, like, how many cows do you have? And it it adjusts. It shifts, you right. know, because mamas have babies. And so right. we'll have babies for a while. And then we take babies to market or we sell them elsewhere. Or we take them to the right. butcher or whatever. Butcher. Or I buy a new cow. And so it, it, it changes. And so when I stop to think about it, like, okay, so... We're at 10 right now, mm-hmm. um, and only <laughs> three of those are not dairy cows, and right. I have one more coming who is a dairy cow. So that means I'm going to have eight mm-hmm. dairy cows? Wow, that's a lot. Like, <laughs> It's a lot of dairy cows. <laughs> what, what are you, are you thinking? thinking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I love it though. And so for a long time, I prayed that my job, I could, I could have a job doing what I love to do, Uh whether it be market gardening, a little tiny dairy. And so here we are. Right. So yeah, it's a lot of work with the cows when chores take three and four hours a day. Right. But that three or four hours a day in the barn or cleaning chickens or whatever beats the nine to five in the town. Yes. (laughs) Hands down every day. Yeah. It's for me. Absolutely. So that's where I'm at. So that's why I'm like, I know it's a good thing. It's just wrapping my head around the transition of this hobby or homestead thing to production. Right. So it's different. Mm -hmm. But it's good. Yeah, it is good. It is good. I'm happy for it. It's good to grow. Yeah. But quiet right now is great. (laughs) Also. (laughs) What about you? What's new on your farm? Yeah, no, it's been slow on my farm too. Um, We, um, I mean, of course we're growing out meat chickens right now for market. Those Mm -hmm. are almost done. I'll probably butcher those next weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then we just sent a cow to the butcher Mm -hmm. again for the market. Yeah. And, um, this particular steer that went was one of our miniature steers. He was almost three years old. And so he wasn't getting any bigger. Right. You know, so it was like, all right, it's, it's time we'll send him. And, um, I particularly really liked this steer because he was, he was friendly. He was social, you know, he, he was a good little cow, mm-hmm. um, but it was his time. So um, I decided that I wanted to keep his hide um, because those miniatures, like, they have curly hair kind of. Oh. And they get, like, they have, like, a shaggier, longer coat. Fun. And so, right, it is. And so he was all solid black, but he had long hair. So I thought, okay. you know what? He's going to make a great rug. <laughs> So That's funny. I went and picked up his hide um, yesterday and got it home from the butcher and got it all salted. It's uh, folded up in the barn fridge. So I'm just letting it sit. And um, this go round, I am going to try something different because that's how I roll. Mm -hmm. And I always just because you got bored with the other way, like to try new things, (laughs) right? Exactly. Like try something different. Try it and see if it works better this way. So like the first rug that I ever did. I hand scraped, which was ridiculous. It Mm. took me like probably 20 something hours to flush this hide. And so, oh no, I'm never doing that again. And so the second one that I did, I used a disc grinder. Right. And that worked really well. I mean, I had the whole thing flushed probably in a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And um, so I liked that method, but I saw another method the other day and um, I'm going to flush this one with a really strong pressure washer. Eric asks me all the time, why doesn't Jenny use a pressure washer? Well, that's what I'm going to do with this one. Okay. And see how it works out. But I got to see if my neighbor will let me borrow his because mine won't get up to pressure. Like I pulled it out the other day, and oh, you once must again, have an air I have leak somewhere. I have broken machinery. The yeah. story of my life. Yeah, so, I know how that goes. But I have a really great neighbor that has a really great pressure washer. So okay. I'm going to see if I can borrow his maybe this weekend. Cool. And get it fleshed and get it going. So wow. I'm excited about that. That is exciting. Yep. It's cool. It's cool to hone your skills to, you know, even the thing that you've already figured out. Right. And like, hey, I think this might be better. Right. I mean, just try it and see, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it's not going to mess it up. Right. What's the worst that can happen? Right. Now, I mean, I don't think you'd want to use the pressure washer on, say, your sheepskin, right? Isn't that a... No, a, that would be way too strong. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, for a sheep hide or deer hide or, you know, yeah. small game, like a bobcat, or it's just way too thin. Mm-hmm. And that's why I like doing the cow hides better. Like, you would think the cow hides would be harder because they're big and they're heavy, It seems more forgiving, though. It's more forgiving, and that weight works to your advantage. Mm -hmm. It it stays on the table better. Mm. It's not going willy-nilly all over the place, you know. So I kind of like the cow hides the best. So, Well, I have a – so, (laughs) again, we have all these sheep. And, like, as I sit back and assess, like, what do we need? What do we don't need? Like, I came close to just being done with the sheep. Well, let me know if you're ever close to done with them. I might take them. Okay. Off your hands. Well, then I thought more about it. I'm like, but they don't cost me anything. Right. I have zero time into the sheep. Right. I don't They're feed them anything. Right. I, I mean, I look at their eyes every now and then. Everybody's yeah. good, you know. Um, but I have three rams that I want to go to butcher this year. Mm-hmm. And the one that, so they were sired by, um, they were sired by a ram that came that was sired by your ram. They came out of because we had Harry Harry here last year. Harry Harry was born out of one of your rams when Mary was at your place. Harry Harry was born out of one of my rams. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then my and then my chocolate ram was here. You had my. I don't remember. Okay, so my my main ram that I'm using right now, mm-hmm. he's um, out of my black belly mama. Mm-hmm. He's like a chocolate color. Okay, he was here. Okay, see, I forgot that your multicolored yes sheep that you have out there came out of my okay. black belly ram. And I knew he had he was black belly. I knew he yeah. had black belly. So he. Um, so I think that was the last ram that you had here. And so I must have sold Harry Harry long ago. You sold Harry Harry before In the my black belly ram came over okay. here. Okay. Yeah. 
So, okay, so that's that would be why I borrowed your Ram then. Yes. Okay. So and he's big he's, now. He's big, and I love his coat. Yeah. He was so ugly. He was hideous, Jenny. When he was born, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it looked happened? like an alien. He is hideous. <laughs> he is so pretty now. Like, I love his coat. He's got a beautiful mane on his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, he's definitely, like, the, the ram in charge of the three. Right. Um. He's got horns though, so I don't want to keep yeah. him. But um, I want I want his coat when he goes. So I want all three of those processed like this winter sometime. Yeah, they'll start turning a year old. I think in February. Mm-hmm. If I'm, I think I have to look back at my notes. But so I want them processed like around then. Yeah, and um, so I'm gonna have to pay you to do his coat because yeah, you're you're good the at she- it. The sheep hides are easy to do. Okay, but. They come out better the thicker they are. Mm. If you have a sheep that really sheds mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. and really well, those hides I don't like how they come out as much because mm. they're just they're just thin. And so I have no idea about him because he was just born this year, right? In this past February or March, something like that. Yeah, he was the first one on the ground though, so I know okay. he's the oldest of them. So it'll be the soonest. Um, they're just starting to get their winter coats. Mm-hmm. So I assume he'll have a winter coat when he goes. That would be when you would want to do that. Okay. Yes, when their coats are the thickest. They come out better like that. Okay. And it'll always stay like that even though he's a hair sheep? Yep. Okay. I mean, the ones that I've done have stayed. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about it. It's such, such a weird thing to be excited about, but I am. <laughs> Because he's the only color that I've had. Right. Um, I do have one of the other rams. He had more color when he was just a little baby, but he's grown out of that. He's got freckles on his face, but that's not a part of the skin you keep. Right. Um, he's funny looking too, honestly. <laughs> I have one I have one that's really funny looking too. He's like all multicolored and yeah. he has like well, I wouldn't really call him horns, but he has like one nub and then like uh-huh. one short little like <laughs> horn that like goes sideways. He's yeah. so ugly. This freckle one I have, he's got like no earlobes almost. That no earlobe gene comes from my black belly mama. Right. Right. Because she has those weird ears. Funky looking. Yes. Like part La Mancha goat or something. I don't even know. I don't either. I don't know where them ears came from. <laughs> yeah, he's he's ugly too. But this this other one is pretty. Anyways, I had, do have one other. Um, I call her Coca Mocha. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got a really cool coat. She's got like two different kinds of hair. Okay. Um, and she has like since she was born. It was like she's cool. I want to keep her. And she's this really pretty color in summer. Now she's got her winter coat, and you can't really see it. But mm-hmm. um, if she has babies next year. Yeah. With the same kind of coat, that would be a cool one to keep. Mm-hmm. She looks neat. So how many sheep do you have right now? 11. Oh, you have 11? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm going to sell one you because she has horns and I just don't want to keep the jean. Yeah. Um, she's all black. Uh, so I, And she's been exposed to the ram. So I'll sell her that way as exposed. And then the three rams are going to go. Nice. And then I'll have to figure out breeding next year with something else. I don't know. Maybe I'll yeah. get another ram. But right. I don't want to keep... I don't want to keep the same ram over and over again. I just don't. Yeah, no. I we've decided that we'll keep them until granddaughters, mm-hmm. and then we'll switch them out. Yeah, it's a good That's idea. Our plan. It's a good idea. That way, I mean, you essentially have them for two breeding seasons, mm-hmm. and you're not having to think about it like all the time, right? You know, and then you, too, you have a little bit of time to like look at the rams that you have, and really kind of you have more time to decide which one you want to keep, right? How fast did they grow? How yeah. big did they grow? Yeah. Right. Are they are they nice temperament? That kind of thing. Right. It's a good idea. Yeah. Well. So that's our plan anyway. Well, sounds like a good plan. Yep. Nothing else. We'll new. see. I mean, yep. I know that's the plan for now. That's how it always is. Like that's the plan for now. <laughs> right. So we'll see. <laughs> we did our best. We did. <laughs> Motto for this year, we did our best. We did our best. That's our motto for this year. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. Yeah. So (laughs) um, tickets for convention will go on sale soon. Soon. We're hoping. Yeah. We're really trying to tie up some loose ends for some information from our vendors and workshop leaders and stuff like that before we really like Mm -hmm. officially, officially launch the website. So yeah, um, it's coming. 
It's coming. You know what I do want to ask for, though? What? So we had a whole bunch of people after last year's convention quickly say, I want to help next year. I want to help next year. If you want to help, you can go to the website. Yes. And there's a link at the bottom. I think it's in the footer. That, it is. That says, um, I want to help or volunteer or something right. like that. So right. you can click that link and answer a few questions. We'll send you an email. Yep. Um, we we could probably start collecting helpers. Yeah, because it's a great way to be able to enjoy the convention free. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we did last year with our volunteers was we just asked them that they volunteer for half a day. Mm-hmm. And then you get the other half of the day to mosey around the convention and listen to speakers and do some shopping and mm-hmm. So it's a great way to get in for free. Yeah, and we need a lot more we, this year. <laughs> we need volunteers. <laughs> yeah, we do. We need we need help. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I guess on that note, yeah, we will talk to you next time. All right, sounds good. Bye, Bye y'all. Bye.